So welcome to part two of this six part tutorial series where we're gonna be making a character animation from scratch. If you haven't already seen part one where we did the modeling, this is gonna be part two where we do the rigging. And um, this is all, once again, if you're not aware, um, based on something I uploaded a few weeks ago, this little animation here. And I'm pretty much showing you guys how I did it and um, the, most of the process. And I'll upload some bonus content eventually up to my Patreon, including the blend files. But um, yeah, this is a fun little series. It's free and uh, just keep watching. And then eventually I'll upload part three, four and five as well. I guess now that we're in part two, we're gonna do some of the rigging. Um, but before we even do the rigging, we should probably add some hooks to the lips here that we wanna control because we're actually gonna be parenting that to our rig. And I'll explain that in a little bit, but for now, let's just select the um, actual lip here. And let's tab into edit mode. Remember, this is a curve that we added in part one. And to add a hook, you simply just click on any one of these um, points. So I'm gonna click on this one here. And you can type in F3 on your keyboard and then type in hook. So I'm gonna type in a hook, like a fish hook. And you can go hook to new object. And you can see it's added this empty in here. Now go do the same with all the others. Just click on them, F3. And if you've already typed it in, you should see, still see it there in the history. So just hook to new object. Click on this one over here, F3, hook to new object. And then the last one at the bottom, F3 hook to new objects. Now all of them have these empties. Now you can go in to object mode. And if you actually select this lip, you can see here that under the modifiers, it has all of these modifiers added right over here. Um, just make sure to select these empties because it'll make it a bit easier and go to the empties properties. And let's just make those cubes and set the size to 0.1. Okay, so we're gonna do that for all of them. We're selecting them. We're gonna make it a cube, 0.1. And I'm just gonna go and do that for all of them. So there we have it. You can make them even smaller. Um, and if you actually grab them and you press G to move them, you can see that's what happens. But make sure to right click so it sets back in place. We don't wanna move them permanently, but that's now um, controlling that. So let's actually add in an armature. Make sure that your um, cursor here is in the center of the world. So Shift S, cursor to world origin. Um, once again, this is not an absolute beginner's tutorial, so sh you should already understand the basics of the cursor and adding in objects. So um, we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in an armature and we have this bone added. Let's go over to our bone properties. Go to our viewport display. Um, actually, let's go to the object data properties for that. Go to the bone groups or viewport display, that's it, yeah. I always forget, it's a bit complicated. I'm gonna go to viewport display and change it from octahedral to B bone, which stands for bendy bone. And uh, with that bone active, we're gonna just go into the edit workspace, just like we do with anything. And let's just select this top knob over here. We're gonna go G, Z, and move it down. Make sure not to move it freehand. We do need it to be accurate, so it's parallel over here. And with this one here, we're just gonna left click on it. And we're gonna go Control Alt S and just make it a bit skinnier. So Control Alt S, just like that. And this is gonna be our master bone. So let's go over here to our little bone tab down here. Make sure not to confuse it with this one here. The armature is just the name of the system as you can see up here in the collections. So make sure to click on this little dog bone looking thing down here. That's the thing we wanna actually come here and change the bone name. And let's just call it root, okay? We're now gonna take this root bone. We're gonna go Shift D. Z and duplicate it and move it up to the top here, to where the chocolate is. Then select that top knob and go G, Z and move it up to here. And this one here, while we're still in the bone tab, let's just call this um, body. And um, what we need to do is with that body active, we need to hold in shift and then select the root bone, then go control P and then go keep offset. So now this one is parented to the root bone. So that'll be the master control over this one, okay? So you'll understand later on. So um, what we need to do as well, because if we go into solid view, we can't really see here. You could toggle on the X-ray. I prefer just to go to the bone, bendy bone um, viewport properties or whatever. Just go click on here and let's go to the viewport display and just go in front, okay? That's just gonna help. Let's go back to this little bone and now we can see through here. Okay, so we have our root bone, we have our body, and if you come here to the armature and you go drop down, you can actually see the bones underneath the armature. So we've got the root and parented under that is the body. So we can see that hierarchical structure right there. So let's actually take this body bone. We're gonna go Shift D to duplicate, right click to let go. And this one, we're gonna go Control Alt S and scale it on the spot. And um, let's just go S and just scale it down in general. So just going S to scale it down. And let's just go G, Z and move it down to about here. Okay, so that's just a bone that we're gonna parent the tray to. So let's just actually call this bone here. Let's just call it face slash tray. Okay, so it's gonna be where some of our facial bones are parented to, and it's also what the tray is gonna be parented to, so we can kind of animate it a little bit later on to give it some of this wobbly jump, if that makes sense. So there we have that, and what we're gonna do is with it active, we're gonna hold in shift, 
and select a body bone. Then we're gonna go control P and we're gonna go keep offset. So now under the hierarchical system, you should see under the body bone, if you go to the drop down, we have that face tray. So keep that hierarchy in mind. So if we were to actually quickly go into pose mode, we should be able to select the master root bone and go G and everything moves along. We should be able to grab the body and just the face slash tray bone goes along. And if we grab the tray bone, nothing else should go along yet. Okay, so go back into edit mode and uh, let's add in our legs here. So we're gonna go shift A, add in a new bone and just select that bone, move it over here. Then just select this top nub at the very top and go G and in your front orthographic view, just move it down like that. And now select the whole bone and go S, X, zero and hit enter. Now it straightens it out. And we're gonna go control alt S and make it really skinny and then go G and move it up like that. So um, I'm just gonna go in wireframe, just helps me see the wireframe. Um, I'm gonna go into the right orthographic view by hitting three on the number pad. I'm gonna select this little nub here. I'm gonna bring it to where the knee is. So you can see what we're doing here. I bring that one down a bit. And then we're gonna select this nub and we're gonna go E to extrude in the right view and extrude it down to where the ankle would be about there. Okay, it doesn't have to be too precise. So you can see we now have these bones here. We'll name them in a second. In fact, let's just select the bottom one here. We'll go Control Alt S and just make it a little bit fatter. And now let's extrude some more bones. So we're gonna select this little nub down here and that's gonna be our foot bone. So selecting this nub, we're gonna go into our right orthographic view and we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna extrude it here to about the middle. And then we're gonna go E to extrude it forward and that is our toe bone. We're also gonna select the nub again at the back here. And we're gonna go E to extrude and then Y and extrude it towards the back like that. Now we have a new bone. We're gonna select this bone and we're gonna go Alt P and we're gonna go disconnect bone and we're gonna go Alt P and we're gonna go clear parent. We don't want this to have any relationship with the foot anymore because it's gonna be a control bone. So we're now gonna do some naming. Let's select the tip here under our bones here. Make sure, and this is actually very important. At this point, you need to be naming because if we're gonna be mirroring this system over to the other side, so we don't have to make it all again, having the naming conventions wrong is gonna mess it all up. So you have to really make sure that you uh, follow along here very precisely. So select the front toe bone and let's just call it toe. That part doesn't matter. But when we now add the extension, that matters. So we're gonna go toe bone and we're gonna go dot capital L and then hit enter. Now that dot capital L, it can't be a comma, it can't be a space, it has to be dot capital L, okay? And that's the important part. Now select the bone up from it, the foot, and let's just call this foot dot capital L. Now select the backbone here, and let's call it foot IK, and then the important part, dot capital L. And um, while we're at it, let's just come over here in fact, let's, we'll do that last because I don't want to confuse you. Let's just keep with the naming. Let's select the bottom bone here on the foot, the, the leg. Let's call that one lower leg dot capital L and then select the upper leg and let's call it upper leg dot capital L. That dot capital L is the most important extension. And um, the reason we didn't give these ones in the middle a dot something an end because they don't have to be mirrored. They're in the middle, but these ones have to be mirrored over to the other side. So now we have the names on that. Um, let's just quickly go in to our pose mode and we want to be able to grab this bone here and move it and the leg system moves along. It's called an IK system. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this IK bone. We're going to hold in shift and then select the lower leg bone. Secondly, we're going to go control shift C. So control shift C and we're going to go give that under the tracking an inverse kinematic modifier. And now if we click on this bone here, that's yellow. We can go to the bone constraint properties and let's take the chain length up to two. That just simply means that from this point here, it's gonna be a control of one, two bones up to chain, right? And if you had more bones going up, you could increase that effect here, the chain length. So if we now select this bone and we go G and we move it, you can see everything follows along. Okay, so just right click to set everything back. Don't wanna move it, but you get the idea. Okay, that should be working. If you had any sort of um, parenting relationships here, that could go haywire. That's why we went Alt P and clear the parent and the connected, we didn't want that. So what we could also do is go back into edit mode and actually just select the foot bone here and then holding in shift in edit mode, select the IK bone, secondly. Then you can go control P and you can go keep offset. Now it's parented the foot to the IK and that would actually work because it doesn't create a dependency in the hierarchical loop. So if you go back to pose mode, and we select the IK here and we go G. You can see we can now move the foot, but we can also rotate it by pressing R and that foot goes along like so, right? Like that, which is really cool. If you've moved anything, just press A to select it in pose mode and go Alt G, 
Alt R and Alt S. That just resets the, the scale, rotation and movement just to make sure that it's all set back in place. But now we have that set up. Let's go into edit mode. Let's select this leg system here. And now you can go to armature and go symmetrize. And if you've named everything correctly, it should have symmetrized it on the other side. And if you actually click on any of these bones on this side, you should actually come to the bones tab and see it's automatically added in that dot capital R automatically, which is really good. You shouldn't have any missing bones. Now let's just go back into pose mode. This is important. Remember I said some of these bones we need to turn off the deform. So these IK bones, for example, and this main control bone here to the root, these bones are not deformation bones. It just means that they don't actually have any weighted properties in relation to the mesh eventually when we parent this system. So we want them to have no deformation capability. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select them by just left clicking on them. So the IK bones, and we're gonna go to this bone tab and under deform, we're gonna untick it. So make sure to do it for both IK bones, very important. Select the root bone and untick the form. And for now, you actually wanna do the same to the body and the head. So select the body and tick off the form and the same one here for the face slash tray bone, we wanna also untick the form. The only ones that'll be de deforming are these foot and upper lower leg toe bones. Those are the ones for now. So just keep that in mind, they're gonna be doing deformation. Um, let's just go back into edit mode. And from this point on, what we're going to do is add some of the facial bones and things like that. I guess let's add in the eye bones, I think, to start off with. And an easy way to get um, the eye bones right in the middle of the eyes, if you wanted to, is you can go into pose object mode. And um, what you can do is you can select the eye. You can go shift S and you can go cursor to select it. It's gonna put the cursor right in the center of your eye. Then you can select your rig, go back into edit mode, and then go shift A, and it's gonna add in a bone on that spot. Select the top knob and go G, Z, move it down. Select the whole thing and then go control alt S and scale it down to make it skinnier. And now if you go to your right orthographic view and your front, you can see it's right in the middle there. So I'm just gonna go Shift S, I'm gonna go cursor to world origin. So it's back there in the middle. And while we have this um, bone here selected, in the right orthographic view of that bone active, we're gonna go R negative nine zero, and we're gonna hit enter. So we just rotated it negative 90 degrees like this. And now it's pointing the right way. And with this one, let's go to our bones tab down here and um, let's just go ahead and call it I dot capital L. And let's just go to the deform here and untick it. And let's just also go to armature and then go symmetrize. And now it's here on the other side as well. And with both of these, hold in shift and select both of these eye bones. And then while you're still holding in shift, select the tray head bone down here and then go control P and then go keep offset. Now these are both parented to this one over here. And what we can also do is add the bones here for the mouth. So let's just go um, shift A add in a new bone and go G, Z and move it up. S to scale it down and then go Control, Alt, S to make it nice and skinny. And then go to your right orthographic view, go G to move it forward to about here. So what we want is that we want it to be right in the middle. So we don't want it here or here, but right in the middle. That's why we moved it up on the Z. But what we want to do is just move it up roughly so it's in the middle of this cube here, which it is. You see this um, empty? You go to your right view and you can see here, um, even if you go into wireframe, you can see here, just get it roughly in the middle of this cube here. So I'm gonna go G and just move it back. So you can see this empty that we added in earlier, it's right in the middle. And what you can do now, you can go um, Shift D and then Z and duplicate it and drag it down. And um, you can go into your right orthographic view and then go G and just move it till it's roughly in the middle of that empty there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see it right there like that. And then back into your front orthographic view, you're gonna go Shift D, duplicate it and move it over to the side like that. So it's in the middle of this one. And if this one, we're gonna move it back in the right orthographic view, just roughly in the middle of that empty there. And with this one, we do have to go down to our bone and just call it um, smile.l. And let's just select this bone at the top. Let's just call that upper lip. And we don't need to add an extension to the middle bones. Let's just call this lower lip for the lower lip, lip bone. So now let's select this smile.capital L that we created and let's go to armature and go symmetrize. And now we have the smile.capital R that has automatically been created. So now let's just hold in shift and select all of these mouth bones we just created. And while we're still holding in shift, let's select the body or the head 
the head bone here and let's go control P and then go keep offset. Now they're all parented to that. So if you actually test this by going into our pose mode, we can actually click on this head here to make it active and then go G and you should see all of those bones, the face and the eye bones moving along. If we select the body here, and we move that, you should see all of that going along because this face is parented to the body. And if we were to select this bottom root bone and we went G to move it, you can see our legs are not yet parented. So let's just quickly do that by going into edit mode. Let's just select the top or the, the upper legs by holding in shift to so both these upper leg bones here. And then while we're still holding in shift, let's select the body, not the tray or the head, but the actual body, this long one here, and then go control P and then go keep offset. So now if we go into our pose mode, we should be able to see if we grab this root control and we go G, those legs go along. The only thing we still need to do quickly is just go back into edit mode and just select these IK bones. So this one here and holding in shift this one here. While we're still holding in shift, just lastly select the middle root bone here and go control P and then go keep offset. Now go back into pose mode. So now if we select the root bone and we go G, all of those bones should go along. So this is our master bone. This is our tray. This is our head. And that's gonna make sense later when we get into the animation. But for now, this is our simple rig. We're eventually gonna take these empties and parent them to these mouth bones so they can um, work the mouth. We'll explain that a little bit later. I think in the next part where we add this all to the rig. So I'm going to go back into object mode. Uh, thank you guys for watching. So just keep in mind in the next part, we're going to take this model, we're going to apply some things and we're actually going to connect it to this rig so we can actually control it. And uh, then that's all of the hard technical stuff done. And we can start getting into the fun stuff like the texturing and the animation and all that sort of stuff. Thank you for watching. And these files will be on my Patreon. You can check that out in the description below.